Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be doing the next problem, number eight, that's string to integer, which just how it sounds, you're, it gives you a string and you return a 32-bit integer. And there can be leading white space, which you just ignore, or if they give you some words at the beginning, you just return zero. So the first number, uh, or a plus or minus sign, uh, is what counts and nothing after it. So any words after it are just truncated. And if there's an overflow, you return the max 32 or minimum 32 bit integer if it's negative. So let's get started. So first thing we need to do is convert the string to character so we can iterate through them. So we'll say let s equal that. And we'll go ahead and skip all the white space like it at, like it asks us to so we'll say so we'll say skip while it is white space and then we'll also need to make it peekable because we'll need to look ahead and see if there's a plus or minus sign before we start consuming the characters so we'll use a match function here and we'll go ahead and peek and so we'll see if the first character is a plus or a minus sign or a digit and so we'll say, if it's a plus sign, then we'll go ahead and iterate the next character. So we'll just go ahead and skip that character. And if it's a minus sign, then we'll need to set the sign to negative. So we'll need to keep track of the sign so that we can multiply the digits that we get afterward by that sign. And we'll also need to know if it's positive or negative, negative. so if there's an overflow, we can give the minimum or maximum 32-bit integer. So we'll go ahead and keep track of the sign. So we'll just say sign is equal to one. So one will be positive and negative one will be uh, negative. So if it's a negative sign, we'll go ahead and set the sign equal to negative one. And then we'll go ahead and iterate to the next character as well. And if, there's, if it's none, so that means that it's just an empty string, then we'll go ahead and return zero. Because whenever there's a word, or basically when the string is an invalid integer, we just return zero. So we'll say none, we'll just return zero. And then we need to make sure that the next character after the plus or minus sign is a number. Because if there's no number after the plus or minus sign, uh, that is a invalid character and we would just return zero. So we'll say, go ahead and peek again and we'll say for the character and we actually missed some fat arrows up here. So we'll go ahead and insert those and we'll go ahead and say if this is not an ASCII digit, so we check for the minus sign and if the next character is not an ASCII digit. And that's just going to be the character 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like the actual character 0. Um, and if not, then we'll go ahead and return 0 for the whole problem. And this will need another fat error. And then we'll also say if there is no other character, so there is no next character, we'll also return zero. And we'll go ahead and just return to do here just to get rid of the errors. And so now we are ready to go ahead and look through our actual digits and convert it to a number. And we also need for any other character just to do nothing. Okay, so finally, we'll go ahead and get all the actual number characters. So we'll say take while the character is an actual ASCII digit, just like we did before. And then we'll go ahead and parse that. So we'll actually need to convert that to a string first. So we'll collect that and use the turbo fist to collect that into a string. 
and then we'll parse that into an integer. And then we need to uh, check and see if there's any overflow. So we'll say unwrap or, and we will say if the sign is equal to one. So this is if there was an overflow. So if there was an overflow and the sign is one, we'll return the uh, maximum I32. And then otherwise, we'll return the minimum I32. And that's our answer. So we'll go ahead and run that. And we actually need to go ahead and multiply it by the sign as well. So we'll say multiply the number by the sign and that should be our answer. Okay, first time. And we'll go ahead and paste this into leak code and see what it comes back with. Okay, so we got zero megabytes zero milliseconds and two megabytes. That's a really good score. So let's look at some other people and what they did. See if we can improve it all. So this guy takes the first number in the sign, or it's actually in in the S. So the S is just going to return the sign just like I did. It's a one if it's a plus sign and it's a negative one if it's a negative sign. And then if it's a digit, he uh, just returns positive as well. So that if there was no negative sign, he's returning the digit. And then he's also returning this in, which basically returns one if there's a plus or minus sign. That just tells that him he wants to go ahead and skip the first character. So he skips that first character down here. And so he's gonna check if there's an overflow. So, Oh, and he goes ahead and assigns overflow to max or min based on if the sign is positive or negative. And then so basically he's shifting for each character and he's going, going ahead and skipping the white space. And then he's taking each character. So while it is a digit and then he's multiplying it by 10 and then adding the current digit and he's converting the character to a digit right here by basically taking the uh, numeric value of zero. So this would be, in ASCII, this would be 48. And so say that this character was a one, the character version of a one, that would be 49. So he would say 49 minus 48, and that would give him the number, which would be one. So um, that's sort of a, a fancy way of converting the character to a digit. And then he's multiplying it by the sign. So if it's a negative number, he's multiplying it by negative. And if he ever overflows, he goes ahead and returns the min or the max. So that's an interesting solution. Let's look at another one. Um, so this guy is taking each of the characters and he's skipping all the white space. So this is before he's found the number. So not none matched, just saying that he hasn't found the number or a plus or minus sign, because after that he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, accept a plus minus sign or white space. He'd only accept numbers after that. And so then he's setting none match to true once he finds one of these, and then he's just shifting it to the left and adding the digit just like uh, the other guy was. And so he then after he finds the number, he just keeps doing that. And then if there was an overflow, he uh, returns the min or the max I32. And this guy did something very similar to me. So he's saying, so he's basically looking ahead and seeing if this is a, a negative sign. And if it is, he's uh, setting the sign equal to negative one or positive one if it's a plus sign. Um, but he's defaulting that to false and then he's skipping the character just like we did. And then he does the same thing that other people did. He uh, multiplies it by 10 and then adds the, the actual digit and then returns the min or max I32 if, he, uh, if there's an overflow. And so that's everyone's problem. 
and will join me on the next one, which will be getting the palindrome, finding if a number is a palindrome.